Hi and welcome. I'm Gary Earl, Nashville music producer. Welcome to Music City Online. Tonight our guest is Tara Shannon, direct from right outside Ottawa, a small town of Russell in the province of Ontario, okay. Canada. <laughs> Tara is a songwriter, a singer-songwriter, and she's got a big release coming up. The song is Butterfly Child, but it's not just any song. It has a, a serious purpose and a real, uh, a real rare, you know, goal and vision behind this song. Would you like to tell us about it? Sure. Um, so the song's called Butterfly Child, mm -hmm. and it's my first uh, release in a long time. The last time I released commercial music was mm -hmm. about 17 years ago of my own. I've worked as a songwriter in between, but this is the first time I've released uh, something commercial since then. And I was inspired by a wonderful young man who lives down the street from me. His name is Jonathan, and uh, he suffers uh, with a very rare genetic condition called EB. Uh, I can't even say the name that it is stands mm -hmm. for that's long. But basically, uh, these children are called butterfly children because the, um, the illness, basically, their body doesn't make the collagen. Um, it's a type of protein, I guess, that keeps the skin together. So mm -hmm. it's thin like a butterfly wing, and it tears at the touch. And so um, most of them are covered in wrappings. of 95% 90, 90, of their body are covered. So it's like having, mm, you know, open wounds, and it is open wounds and burns. Yeah. So he, I know him because his sister, knowing me, played hockey with my daughter, Kiera, her big hockey family. And, uh, and so that's how I first met them. And recently, in the last year or so, uh, there was a lot of efforts in the village. You were hearing a lot of uh, fundraising efforts to raise money for him because one of his, well, his big wish is to go see the Northern Lights. And so through the mm -hmm. Deborah Canada organization, they give the kids a wish, and then they try to raise money to help them, you know, with whatever it is that they're wishing for. So there was trivia nights and, and events to raise money and stuff, and you know, so I thought this would be a way for me to contribute. So I, that's how I came up with the idea to write the song and um, reached out to sort of my network of friends and put it together. And so 100% of the sales from the single will go to him towards that goal of seeing the Northern Lights as well as some treatment that he requires. Mm -hmm. And then we put the music video together because I had heard some rumblings that some people were trying to get him on the Ellen show. And I thought, yeah. well, that'd be awesome. I mean, Ellen's just awesome. So that's just awesome she in is. and of itself. And, uh, but I thought I, the way that I could help would be to give them a vehicle through which to do that. So a product that they could use to help raise mm -hmm. awareness. So we put a music video together for the single. And it's a great video. It's on Music City Online YouTube channel. If you'd like to see it, uh, not right now, but in a couple of <laughs> <After> minutes, <this. laughs> then you can click onto it and watch the video. Terrific video. Yes, thank you. We had, uh, yeah. it just came together. It was just amazing how, um, like Russell's a very special place. It's a small town. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've lived there 22 <clears throat> years. And it's just an amazing place. So like how it all came together, we had a quick meeting with the director. I said, I've got some ideas for storyboard. And he's like, okay, let's make this happen. So I literally called the mayor up and said, can I have the arena? And he said, let me pass it by the people and do the township mm -hmm. thing, you know? And he said, absolutely, we're gonna support you. Called up the schools. I need some kids. They sent me 150 students, <laughs> which was <That's> great. <laughs> wonderful. Um, yeah. And so we had set up, I set up these uh, stations great. in the arena for them to do crafts and stuff. And just, mm -hmm. I also wanted to educate the kids on how a music video is done. Cause they don't, that's not, it's not very often that they get to experience that. Exactly. Terrific. And yeah. uh, anyways, they were just, the whole town just, yeah. I went to local businesses to be sponsors for it. And everybody mm -hmm. was just like, ah, there was never a hesitation. Wow. And even in Russell, cause really it's been oversaturated with demand to help because there's so much need out there. There's so much need. And so everybody's at the ready to help. And it, it doesn't matter how many times you go back and ask people, you know, if you come up with a new idea, they're always right there. And that's what's so amazing about Russell. So everybody just came together and we took, it took 14 yeah. hours to shoot this video. Started with the kids at the arena. And then we went to Jonathan's house and did what we call B-roll. And, um, yep. and then we went to a studio, a friend of mine owns a studio, Raven Street. And uh, we cut the, the artist performance there and Jonathan's interview. And to meet him, he's, he's an incredible young man. He's an old soul. Yeah. And he's just, just being around him and just the way he speaks and what he has to teach is just incredible. 
So it was easy to be inspired by him to write the song and try to help. Oh, and having that problem, it would be very easy to just be bitter. Mm, absolutely. You know, it's, it's amazing, yeah, the attitudes. Oh, and my heart, as much as I suffer with, I suffer alongside Jonathan, I can try to empathize yeah. with that as a mother. My yeah. connection is immediately to Tina, his mom, and she's such an amazing lady, and she just quietly just does everything she needs to do. What strikes me the most, what I keep coming back to, is that um, every couple of days, uh, Jonathan has to have the bath where he has to take these wrappings off and clean the wounds mm -hmm. because infection is the big danger. Right. Um, yeah. And TSN had done a beautiful story on him, which is another video you can watch after this one. Um, it, uh, James yeah. Duthie did this incredible story and they, uh, they allowed him in the house and he uh, taped them, or video, made a, put a story together about what bath time is like, just so people could get a real understanding of this disease. And for me as a mother, what can I connect to is that we're like wired, you know as a parent, we're wired to protect our children. Like biologically, we're wired that way. So to yeah. be the one that has to, you know, do that to your child, um, to protect them, goes against the way we're made up. So the amount of strength that she has to draw yeah. from to do that is what I connect to the most yeah. um, and to watch them mm -hmm. together uh, is incredible and you'll get a chance to meet them because they're coming here to Nashville. Excellent. How mm -hmm. is that and when? They're coming in uh, February because the hockey connection has you know is a big one now <laughs> other than you know our family being a big hockey family and Jonathan yeah. if you get him talking about hockey it's like he could talk all day all day about hockey so him and my husband get talking about hockey and it's like he's just he loves it he's so passionate his eyes light up and yeah. Anyway, so the NHL had, so the Ottawa Senators, which is our home mm -hmm. team, um, have taken Jonathan under their wing and uh, get, let him be assist, uh, general manager for the day, assistant general oh, manager GM with great. Ryan Murray for the day, which was oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, he's really involved with the Senators Club. And so by extension of that, uh, the NHL awards were held in Vegas on the 24th, the same day that my music video was released. And they had Jonathan down as a guest and they brought him on stage and they surprised him by telling him that they were bringing him to the All-Star Game in February, which is being held in Nashville. Nashville. The Preds, the wow. Preds are hosting it. So wow. um, yeah, so that was incredible. So yeah. I, I was super excited because this is my second favorite city other than <laughs> Russell, <laughs> so I love it here. It's cool. Yeah, and he's just gonna have a great, it's such wow. a, an amazing, that's gonna be an amazing wow. event for him to attend. You brought up something when you're talking about how amazing the people are in Russell. Mm -hmm. The, uh, I guess I'm treading into stereotypes here, which is always dangerous. But, <laughs> but uh, I mean, Americans always think of Canadians as being the nicest people mm -hmm. on earth. That's so nice. Well, I mean, I mean <laughs> but you're aware of that, aren't yes, you? Yes, I am. I, and that's I mean, our, sort just... of our international like uh, stereotype, I guess, which is a great one to have. But, but but it's it's. But you are the country that invented hockey, and that rule, and <laughs> and yet hockey is not a nice sport. <laughs> what are you talking about? Hockey's great. It's so polite. It's so like you know. I mean, you know, slow and boring. No, hockey. You gotta be tough. Hockey brings out I, uh, our other side of us. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's like you know, rugby on steroids. Oh, hockey's kind of, like know, the so. best sport ever. Yeah. It really is the best sport ever. I can't even skate. Honestly, I'm terrible. Well, maybe that's because <laughs> Canadians get tired of being nice all day long. That's right. We have all this pent up. So you get on the ice <laughs> and walk each that's other. That's right. Okay. And it's not just the the players on the ice. The fans are really passionate. Yes, I and, know. Uh, I was so pleasantly surprised, though. I had never seen a game outside of a Canadian market, so I got mm -hmm. to see the Kings play the Blackhawks in, during yes. the, uh, in L.A. last year, and I got to see <coughs> Preds play this year, and I uh, here in Nashville. And I was so I just I was so thrilled that the level of passion it's the that same, exactly. it's exactly the <laughs> no. same. And you guys have so many more sports to choose from. So people that choose hockey, that are hockey yeah. fans, they're super passionate here too. And I love that. Yeah. I just thought they did a great job. You well, know? you know, the Nashvillians are known to be among the worst. We're considered either the most friendly or second most friendly city in America. Oh, okay, cool. And and the same sort of a thing. If you go to the 
Predators game, yeah. you know, there's like these bloodthirsty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh! And the, uh, and it, it it gets worse. Like the ho- hockey moms have a, get a bad rap, I think, and yes. hockey parents. I think some of them kind of go a little crazy, a little overboard. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, like all all seven of my children have yeah. played, and uh, a couple of my boys were yeah. drafted to Central, and uh, so cool. we're a big hockey family. And I probably have crossed that crazy hockey mom line a couple of times here and there, <laughs> yeah. but generally I've never been thrown out of an arena. And generally, I'm pretty well behaved. But you just, you know, it's a, it's a very yeah. passionate game. It is. Uh, one of my best friends, his two boys played a hockey. And they're in college now, yeah. but they played a hockey all the time growing up. And they were on travel to Hines, yeah. and they would literally go all the way to Canada to do a game when they were in middle school. Oh yeah. Or all the way to Florida or LA, and. Yeah, we have to go where you can compete, right? Yeah. Where there's teams. But I. Just, I mean, you talk about passion. I mean, that's that's commitment. Oh, yeah, it's a big wow. commitment. And people often ask us, they'll say, oh, my God, because we have a large family, you know, um, sec- mm-hmm. uh, five boys and two girls. They'll say, how do you do it? How do you do it? You know what? Having the kids is fun. That's easy. It's keeping up with all the activities. That's what's challenging. And yeah. then our boys, you know, you put them in an activity, and they they just were very good at hockey. They were gifted at it. So then, you know, you kind of have to start support. You support that, and then right. you end up in this competitive stream of uh, now you're committed, yeah. right? And you're doing, right. you know, all of this. At one point, we had, at one point with all the kids playing competitive, we had 25 ice times per week. Wow. Yeah, and that was Matt. And I was, you know, toting babies in diapers behind the ones that were playing. So that was, I look back on that, I'm like, mm, that's crazy. That was crazy wow, to keep up with that. That's a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> but, you, and it's, a uh, wow. hockey is very much like a family. I think that's the other reason hockey does really well yeah. here, because Nashville feels like that. You get that sense. Very family oriented. Very family place. oriented. Yeah. And even in the music industry, there's that sense of yeah. belonging. And hockey feels that way. Like hockey families, they're yeah. very, everybody supports one another and, uh, so it's been a it's been a crazy time through raising the kids, but it's been a wonderful yeah. time. A lot of our best memories come from that. I'm Terrific! Sure. Wow. Well, there's a couple of questions that I like to ask sure. all of my guests. Okay. Uh, one of them is, can you tell us a fun fact about yourself that not many people know, and none of our viewers would know? Uh, a fun fact. I mean, you've already told us several things about I, hockey I would, and things. I would probably, you know, now that I've said it so the viewers know already but probably that I have so many children that's mm-hmm. probably the the biggest surprise people yeah. have when they meet me so that's and seven to seven kids yeah that's yeah. probably the biggest is that fun I don't know if that qualifies as fun but <laughs> it is it is an well, interesting fact yeah, yeah I mean there's always amazingly fun moments yeah. with having kids I mean there's an amazing amount of work too but yeah but is. you know it's it's um I'm fond of telling people that you know I held off having a kid and I spent years performing in the large Vegas casinos Mm -hmm. you know in front of hundreds of thousands of people I spent years in LA working in movie sets and literally got to go lunch with Clint Eastwood three times and hang out with Donna Summers and shared an office with Chevy Chase and and I've and I also spent years in Nevada tracking bears and mountain climbing (laughs) So I've done a lot of the things that most people would only dream of doing, but you know, there's nothing in my life been as much fun mm. as story time to yeah. your little kid. I know. I mean, that's like, it's like the best. There's nothing that. And comes it's close. it's it's a surprise almost when that happens when you when you're doing something so simple, but it's so fulfilling. Exactly. So full. Yeah. You know, and compared to all these other things you do. And um, I mean, when I was offered my uh, record deal years ago, after my record came out, that first one, Mm -hmm. I had four kids at the time. And I was sort Mm -hmm. of on this path that I wanted to be a recording artist, is what I wanted to do. And I didn't, I was chasing something that I didn't really understand what that was. I had an idea of what it was, and it looked pretty cool. And I was like, that's the life I want, right? Like most people, right? So you get closer, it's there, it's on your doorstep. And I remember I asked this, uh, what I call a for real manager who came into my life at the time, and he was just a, such a wonderful person. You know, people just cross your path for a particular purpose at a particular time. He was one of those for me. I said, tell me what it's really like. Like, not the Hollywood version. I need real. And he said, well, to launch a record, you're looking at uh, two years, no family, no friends. And I was like, uh, okay, well, um, so <laughs> I was like, so that was when I realized that what I was chasing was really in direct conflict with 
my first, what I felt was my first calling, which was motherhood. And so I kind of yeah. switched and just focused on songwriting then and artist development, helping other artists at that moment. Yeah. So fast forward to now, the children are older, and I have a better idea of what that looks like and how I can, as mm -hmm. an independent artist, I can maneuver that uh, the <coughs> ebb and flow of how that will work mm -hmm. a little more easily in being right. in charge. So, but I never had regret. Like I never had regret ever about that decision. And um, but when you look back and you look at the reason things happen and stuff, I have no doubt in my mind that the level of fulfillment and joy and love that I've experienced because I kept on that road far outweighs what I would have experienced had I chosen that fork in the road at that time. Yeah. You know, um, because children are they're um, amazingly complex little people, but they're they teach us so much about ourselves. Yeah. Uh, they're very, very, uh, my kids are very special. Yeah. All kids are special, but of course mine are more special. <laughs> <laughs> it's, they're right. That's, yeah. I remember I had a teacher that told me once, he said, just remember you are a very special individual just like everyone else. <laughs> exactly. <So. laughs> Everybody's special. <laughs> and I, I, walked away and I had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> You're like, is that a compliment? <laughs> no, wait a Not second. a compliment. <laughs> what was she saying exactly? <laughs> yeah. So, it was my basketball coach. So. Oh, it was? It was your basketball yeah. coach? I think oh. there may have been more layers of meaning to that. There may have been. If a basketball coach yeah. uses the word special, I would say it may not have yeah. been. I was, second. I was second team already. So I think he was thinking about demoting me to oh. third team. Probably. Well, third team's better than manager. I made the team as a manager. Oh, yeah, so that was, that was pretty bad. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, if it works, it works. So, yeah. it has. so a second question. Mm. Hmm. Let's see. Gosh. <laughs> if you had to pick one song as your theme song, what would that song be? Oh gosh, my one theme song. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is "Staying Alive, <laughs> Staying Alive," <laughs> <laughs> and of that, course seventies seventies disco. I, well, that was Bee Gees. You know, you're still in the uh, the British so the British Empire. That's what I was raised with. That's the music I was raised yeah. with. You know, all the seventies. You know, you know, Loggins and Messina and T James Taylor and all that's but, my what I was raised with. But before you leave tonight, I'll have to show you a f photograph, an early uh, performance photograph of me uh, with Barry Gibb hair and beard and clothes. You're kidding! No, I'm not kidding. Oh, wow. It was my earliest uh, photo shoot as an artist. Wow. Yeah. What a treat, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to see that. I want to see that. That was when I had hair, yes. Oh, wow. A really, really long time ago. <laughs> yes. Weighed 136 pounds. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> so, oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah, no, I'd have to say that's my theme song. I, if I could think of a song that had a lyric like, breathe in, breathe out, repeat. That would be what I would choose, you know, or one day at a time. It's probably what I've learned the most. Oh, well, actually, one day at a time was a good one song, too. One day at too. a time. One day at a time. From the, uh, from the TV sitcom, One Day at a Time. One oh, day at a time. Dun, 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 good memory. Dun, 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 dun. That's it. Well, I, back then, I was uh, probably in middle school, and I was deeply in love with Valerie Bertinelli. So oh, of course, like every other that's child. That's the yeah. only reason why I remember that song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would definitely be my theme song, One Day at a Time. I'll have to edit that yeah. out, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't want to reveal too much of yourself. <laughs> You're giving well, away secrets now. Embarrassing. I'm <laughs> showing my age, too. Oh, gosh, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> just, so, okay, yeah. very good. Excellent. So, so remember, the video, mm -hmm. Butterfly Child, yep. is okay. on Music City Online. You can click on it and check it out there. Yeah. And the song is available on iTunes. iTunes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. And uh, all the monetization from the video goes directly to Jonathan and 100% of the sales go directly to him Terrific. as well. Terrific. And you were talking about, you know, choosing the other path that would allow you to do family and things. It also has allowed you to do things like this song to help other people make the world a better place. Yeah, well, literally, you know. Thanks. There's a, 
I think all the gifts and talents that we all have, you know, if we can use them mm -hmm. to, uh, to not sound sort of cliche or cheesy or all that kind yeah. of stuff, but just, and it's not, it's not a religious thing or anything other than humanity. It's, a, you know, it's a humanitarian mm -hmm. thing where mm -hmm. we just, you right. know, serve one another <coughs> using the gifts that, that we have. And, um, you know, some of us are, you know, you can be lucky enough to be able to use your gifts and talents and make a living and have a career. Um, mm -hmm. and be successful such as yourself as a very successful producer does amazing work by the way um, if you're looking for a producer um, and uh, he didn't pay me to say that it's actually true he did two of my tracks <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah I think if we all when we do that I think that's been the most surprising response uh, mm -hmm. that I've had when you're motivated to to do something like this it doesn't really occur, it doesn't occur to me or didn't cross my mind you know oh you know what you know people are going to see you as so giving or like none of that really crosses your mind you just right. you see a need and you're like this is how i can help i going to help but help. the biggest surprise has been the f the fan response the response of it's things like it's so good of you to do this and these kinds of comments and i read that and i find <coughs> that it's like shocking a eh? like it surprises me but it's that's what people see and then i was like oh that's a good thing that people see it see that because it encouraged them to use their gifts and talents to help others too right. you know um, even though that's not your motivator like you don't sit there and go oh you know I'm gonna do this because it makes me a good person it's not like right. that at all it's just you see a need and and you're inspired to act there was a lot like a lot of people came together to make this work so many mm -hmm. many people were inspired to help and it just it's one of those things I don't know if you've had this experience where it starts as an idea and you sort of you, you put the ball in motion so many things could have gone wrong to stop this and yeah. so many things fell into place perfectly for this to roll out the way it did and the day the the video was released what what i was trying to do was just get it released in time before school stopped before the summer holidays started that was the last day of school because <laughs> so you get the school kids i wanted to get the school kids back so they could see what they did <coughs> and also send home go home and tell mom and dad to buy the song that was the idea mm -hmm. and the nhl awards happened to be on the same day and it got connected and then TSN posted and tweeted, and the Senators did, and then our yeah. National Duke News did. So it just kind of took on a life of its own right out of the gate, which um, it was just incredible to see. It was, we were very fortunate. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, check out the video. Go buy this song. Help out the cause. And thanks, Tara, for coming on Music City tonight. Really enjoyed it, and I'm eager to see how the things roll through and uh, looking forward to February. Oh, great. Well, thank you so, so. much for having me. It's been a, pl a real pleasure, and uh, I hope you get the chance to meet Jonathan. Good. He's incredible. Good night. See you all at the studio.